Yeah, was at the party. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. What's up? I'll get wrong for putting up another poll. I told y'all. <laughs> Bro, all y'all without me a thousand dollars a piece. Damn, brown sugar. Hey. Hey. First of all, first of all, I want fair and square. And no, if, if y'all want to vote for AP, what y'all want me to get on here and say the same stuff over and over and over again like she do? That's not no. me. Brown sugar, brown sugar. Okay, we I'll talk about AP then. It's the welfare system. And, <laughs> um, single mothers, uh, the single mothers that have these babies. Your husband pulls them. And, I mean, I'm Keep not going. like that. I'm not going to ever be Damn, like brown sugar is finally making sense. We're not we're not um we're not taking your 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 position. We're not taking your appointment, man. We're not okay. We're not so why you put the polo for the end? Because we just wanted to see what the what the you a messy yo, ass nigga. Yo, who who's winning? This is your approval rating. Um, who's winning? Brown sugar. Brown sugar. This is and your And y'all voted for AP. I got more spin now. Then she do. So how how the hell y'all gonna vote for her? I got like five spin Yo, spin-offs. brown sugar, you are funny. I got five I, spin I, I got one deal with you, but you funny. You are funny. I'm serious though. I'm just saying. No, but brown yeah, you sugar. know what? I I, I kind of have to agree with brown sugar. After she left, that was kind of that was kind of uh, grimy to put that pole up like that. <laughs> no, what I wanted to do is I wanted to, uh, because because of this dust up, I wanted to see her approval rating. All all presidents and vice presidents have an approval rating, man. So this is her approval rating. Right. You know what I'm saying? Approval rating can't always happen when something good happens. Yeah, I that'd, just be biased. Listed. that'd be biased though. That'd be biased. I just what have you done for me lately? TV. Right. Three weeks ago, and you're gonna do a damn approval right now. Me just think about this in 2020, <laughs> black women saved democracy. Now, True. in 2024, we get we find all these black women, strong black women, fucking the fucking help. And yeah, more know. frequent audits. Yo, know, brush yeah. your exactly. 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 Mayor, exactly. Mayor, I, I think if you Wait. said uh, community, community and ambulance more. Your computer rate right, might go up. <laughs> the computer, say say compute. I want you to get on here and say computer, community, ambulance. That's Cheer, what I want to hear when you get on here. Cheering, cheering. Yeah, okay. You could be the, could be the DA of Ag Nation. I, I can't help it. Community. Well, hold on, Brushin. Cheers, Brushin. The what? Why are you jumping the gun? I mean, it's only ninety-four votes in. I mean, why are you not being patient? You I don't know because it's, no, that's foul. Yeah, what are you so afraid of, Brent Sugar? <laughs> that's foul. Well, see, the the reason why the poll the reason why the poll is not good is because you're taking it at at one of her worst moments. So of course that poll is going to be skewed. Thank you. Siv. Well, how do you know? Why I would you even poll if you know? Mm, because oh, it oh, was oh. such because what Brown Sugar said was such a um, anti reality thing that she said that nobody's going to vote, you know, right now to say, oh, we picked brown sugar over AP. I they know mad because I share my experience at the moment. Okay, fine. Y'all didn't like that. Fine. Hey, brown so sugar, that was your truth, brown off, sugar. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, you still getting 35%. You, you, no. You got 35% Y'all going to choose rate. AP over me? Ain't nobody I'm on your. I'm on brown, brown sugar. I'm on your side. Brown uh, sugar. Don't be greedy. I'm not being brown greedy. Sugar. I just want the votes. Brown, brown sugar. We're gonna check back and look at this to 200, man. You, you still, you still got program, time for real. You still got time, man. Let me, let's see if this brother did it, man. Because I, I think he came I, up with a lie in time. I want to. Yeah, I, something about it. Like one thing I know about living in a in, in violent neighborhoods. Is that they never really just grab anybody. They always grab the right people. Whether the guys beat it or they, they don't give a statement and the cops can't hold them, but they they almost always grab the right people. Man, I never really seen them grab like the wrong people. I just never seen that, man. But let's go. Mr. Park. A fight in August 1987. Someone gets beaten and robbed. 
Days later, a shooting. Three people shot. Clinton Arnold died. Police call it revenge. Say Dwayne Brooks was one of the shooters. What happened? Luke Easter Park, August 17, 1987. I don't know. To this day, I don't know. How do you not know? I wasn't there. Brooks insists there he wasn't was. even in Cleveland that day. He says he was in New York on Long Island. Had been for two days. A jury didn't buy it. Brooks sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. When I first got to prison, they slammed that door behind me. Hold on. Why didn't they tell us who, who I laid put on him on the scene? Cleveland that day. Why didn't that tell us who put it? He says he was in Long Island, right? So why didn't the guy ask him? Was he because remember they said it was a fight and then the next day was a shooting. Was he there for the fight and not there for the shooting? If he was in Long Island, they never elaborate. Yeah, who they, put him in Cleveland? Yeah, they wouldn't know he even existed if he was in uh, Long Island. So how the hell he get caught up? Yeah, because because who put him? Because you have to be on the scene in order for a murder. Somebody has to put you on the scene. Y'all ain't put know him on the scene. Y'all ain't know. No, no, no. They was at the station, and then they did that shit when they put all these some people in the neighborhood in the hat. And they take it up <laughs> and they toss it around and then they pick a name and then they be like, Yep, he gonna be charged with the last homicide that we just had. Yep, that's about but how it. they do that now with all I, I thought y'all threw darts, Crook County. I thought y'all threw darts on the board and wherever it landed. Nah, darts, darts are racist. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I I I I just there's a lot to be a lot of evidence they left out in why didn't they say okay um a witness or a faulty witness put him on the scene or uh somebody you know what i'm saying like uh do what the old boy did they never so elaborate blind. <laughs> yeah man let's see let's see what to this day i don't know how do you not know i wasn't there brooks insists he wasn't even in cleveland that day he says he was in New York on Long Island, had been for two days. A jury didn't buy it. Brooks sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. When I first got to prison, they slammed that door behind me. I laid on that on that bunk. I cried. Yeah. If even if you're in Cleveland, even if you're at the seat, if you didn't do it, you didn't do it, right? You don't need to to tell that you're on the other side of the planet if you really didn't do it. That's true. Yeah, you wouldn't need to Like, there are people who saying he was there. That's how he got convicted. I bet you this motherfucker gave a full confession, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and and also, act, uh, stop the steal. Stop the poll. Uh, they already gave it to Brown Sugar, so leave it. No. No, this is not this is not to take anything from her. We just wanted Brown Sugar's approval rating, man. That's all. He was Brown Sugar is the best. This was Tommy and do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with Brown Sugar this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still thought that you know, within some months, whether it was three or six months, or even a year, that this conviction would be overturned. But reversing a conviction isn't easy. Years of appeals grew into decades. Then the discovery. I knew it was big, and I knew it was everything that I had been telling people all of those years. They were police reports from the murder. Revelations Brooks had never seen that a witness put two other men in the van used in the deadly shooting. And that the man who testified Brooks was the shooter was himself under FBI investigation. Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything. All that means is he was the type of guy that would know. Like, the fucking librarian ain't gonna fucking know who did that shooting. It's gonna be another grimy fucking street urchin who knows who did the shooting. Like, that's that's bullshit, the fact that, oh, he was in trouble, too, with the law. Hey, it's all right to, say, it's all right to bring up a person's past and when they motherfucking... Right. It's, it's beneficial and shit, you know what I'm saying? 
Exactly. But if you bring up George Floyd past, then you a motherfucking the worst person ever. We were like, oh, what you did, man? Dude, dude couldn't produce a, like a, a receipt or something showing he was in. Uh, you was in Long Island for all them weeks, right? You ain't get a motherfucking. I mean, you got a receipt. You not on camera. Two days. Oh, two days. You are correct. Yeah, yeah, and you are correct. Before George Floyd even got to Long Island, you know, he get to his house everything is already sorted out to to the judges to the prosecutors they already have everything they need to uh to have a probable cause right yeah to get yeah, you warrant, yeah yeah you gotta have a threshold there's a threshold i've had i've had that happen to me i've had my house raided several times and when on the affidavit when they show you the affidavit and show you all the discovery and all the stuff they have man it ain't just like oh we think we we smell weed when we walk past this house. Nah, they got like a surveillance and shit like that. So yeah, and and but back to the they got guy, enough. Yeah, the guy who 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 told him that they said two things. They said there were two other people in the van. Like so so what? <laughs> like the former said there were two other people in the van. That doesn't mean that you couldn't be the shooter. Or I guess he that he said, I guess they're gonna say that, well, the shooter could have been one of them. But I thought you weren't there. No, you know what? He's in a, uh, he's in a uh, like I said at the beginning, man. If as soon as someone asks you that question and you've been planning on this interview, you're gonna say, you know, I was in Canada and I was with my girlfriend and we hung out all day and we went to the movies. End of story. Where is his passion at? Like, yeah. you spent 25 years behind bars for a crime you say you didn't do. There's no passion in his voice. You know, he just, I wasn't there. Like, he talking about something. <laughs> like, every day to that <laughs> interview. Wasn't there. Because he like, didn't he do it. He, he just looks. That man lying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so vanilla with his answers. Do y'all think that uh, 25 years is enough for a gangbanger to kill another gangbanger? Because I do. Yeah, plenty. Plenty enough. Um, let's see. Let's see. All the dolce years. They were police reports from the murder. Revelations Brooks had never seen that a witness put two other men in the van used in the deadly shooting. And that the man who testified Brooks was the shooter was himself under FBI investigation. Brooks' attorney says he never saw those police reports before trial. It was exculpatory and very useful to the defense. The lead prosecutor on Brooks' case says in 1988, the policy was police reports were not handed over to defense attorneys. Is the defendant going to trial with the deck stacked against him without access to these reports? Oh, absolutely. Michael absolutely. Benza is a senior law instructor at Case Western Reserve University. While the prosecutor's policy has since changed, Benza believes right now innocent people sit in prison because of it. It is unfortunately a probably fairly common denominator among, among exonerations. But would it be enough to overturn Brooks' conviction? Do you believe you got run over by the wheels of justice? Without a doubt. They railroaded me, ran me over, sent me up the river. All the terms, I, I I can relate to him now. He got all his over. life. Okay. His life means something. <laughs> He's not passionate enough for me. Yeah, I'll you see how bad I hope. was yeah. about so. how I want him. I want him just like how I was. And he I knew that was coming. I knew this because, was building up. Yes, because Cry like I'm R. Kelly. Passionate. I'm passionate, oh, and I didn't even know. I like to get out the panel for ten minutes. He been locked oh, up for twenty five years. <laughs> hey, but look at this though. I mean, uh, he's not out yet, right? But look at the title of the video. It says "A Look at Wrongfully Convicted." So they've already assumed that he's wrongfully convicted. Yeah. Thing. Robertson, hopeful she'll finally get the chance to see her brother walk the streets a free man. Out of the prisons, he spent nearly two thirds of his life locked in. A prisoner, she believes, of a system more concerned with getting a conviction than getting it right. How do we have any hope in a justice system? <laughs> wow. 
Oh. Do you hear that shit though? She say a system that's <laughs> worried more about getting a conviction, than, but they don't post. We don't. The system don't post to give a fuck about some people. Right. So they well, there's an ironic accuracy case. in her statement. Yeah, the the system the system doesn't care about black people. Um, half of the cases in every city are unsolved, but this one they just had to get a conviction for this fucking piece of shit that probably got killed. The guy who probably got killed probably was a piece of shit. Didn't have any fucking millionaire fucking city hall family members and shit. His mother probably was a cashier. His dad was probably in prison. Why this case did they have to get a conviction for this case? Like, this is all horse shit. And then she's like, how can we ever have faith in the criminal justice system? Oh, man. Then getting it right. How do we have any hope? in a justice system. If it could be him, it could be me, it could be my son, it could be anyone. And and that's a fallacy. That's 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 a fallacy that it could be my son because first off, she's making it seem like they just pulled his name out of a hat like you said earlier. You have to there had there's a fight one day then the two days later, there's a shooting and retaliation for the fight. And then he's in Long Island and people put him on the scene in Cleveland while he says he's in Long Island. Your son would have to be involved in something like that. Sisters try to make it seem like, well, her son could just be at the library and cops bust in and like, yo, you yeah. killed. And you know the logic of no one should have to die because of a traffic stop. He didn't die because of a fucking traffic stop. He died because he fucking beat the shit out of two cops, tried to take their gun, <laughs> you know exactly. took them on a high speed chase, pointed a gun at them. It was like, like bro, like that's that whole yeah. shit. Like the logic just doesn't fucking exist, bro. Some people, but it's bullshit. Some people are blowing smoke up people's asses too when they do that shit. It's not what, even about logic. What year this happened? 85. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. 85. Mm. Swallowed by the system. Just how many people sit in Ohio prisons wrongfully convicted? One legal expert warns, we may never know. Unfortunately, the vast majority of people who are sentenced to prison do not have lawyers and do not have resources to do that kind of work. Up next, an but inside look at the difficult choices to determine which cases get re-examined. You see the headlines. For every one of these people who get exonerated, experts say there are many more who are locked away for crimes they didn't commit. News 5 investigator Tara Morgan takes us inside the difficult process to show how cases are selected for review. A murder in 1974 put Isaiah Andrews on what seemed an insurmountable path. My life is mostly gone with my help. The killing of his wife, Regina. Her body found with 11 stab wounds in Forest Hill Park, a crime Isaiah didn't. 11 stab wounds is personal. That's a crime that's of personal. Yeah, that's a, a crime of passion. Yeah, a crime of passion. Crime of passion is usually. My life is mostly gone. Yeah, the, the spouse. I thought that was Mickey Mouse. With my help. The killing of his wife, Regina. Her body found with 11 stab wounds in Forest Hill Park, a crime Isaiah didn't commit. We have people that are in prison that don't belong there. And for me, there's... White women are the worst. You know, she doesn't believe anything she's saying. She, 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 Her she's she being big. This, what's that called? Pr pr what's you call that word? The cringe. No, nah, that's not problematic. Nah. That's, 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 <laughs> that's what your jaw. That's your jaw. That's Jay Leno. That's a Jay Leno chin. Yeah, that's Jay Leno. But, but here's the thing she doesn't sound like she believes it. She sounds like she's trying to convince herself. Isaiah didn't commit. We have people that are in prison that don't belong there. And for me, there's no greater injustice. Laura Gregg's mission is to help people like Isaiah at the new wrongful conviction clinic at Cleveland State University. The need is 
exponential. We have far more claims than we have attorneys working in this space. Already demand. That's because everybody, once they find out about your office, they send their shit. Everybody sends their fucking case to you. That's why. You... I sent my case to her too if I was locked up. Man, every but fucking song. The moral of the story is that everyone's retarded. Yeah, because think about how stupid she has to be to to not make that correlation. To think to not to think that, oh well, everybody's sending me their case because they know that we're we're getting people free. She thinks that all these cases are indicative of how many people are Yeah, yeah she thinks it's genuine. She's like, Oh my god, hey, hey, everyone's uh, all the criminals are honest. Right, right. You got you got look, it's this motherfuckers in there, they sell been working on they they packet this whole time. And the other cell mate looking at them do this innocent project shit. He just be like, "Man, I hope you get out, man, because you know you innocent, man. I'm guilty, so I ain't gonna yeah. submit my package." Yeah, yeah. She really said yeah. she thinks every criminal is honest. <laughs> yeah, Yo, the hell. Is, she yo, do. your mic is your mic is flaming, my G. You gotta um turn your mic down a little bit. Um, How about now? Nah. <laughs> You have a probably step away from it. Yeah, like like you um, yeah, man. Maybe I don't know you, what the fuck going on. Maybe you need to go to Long Island for two days. Exactly, man. You a little you a little guy too, man. You with that big ass voice, man. How the fuck you? God damn, man. New wrongful conviction clinic at Cleveland State University. The need is exponential. We have far more claims than we have attorneys working in this space. Already, demand is high from inmates, their families, and attorneys. Six students will help re-examine cases. We've had uh, almost 40 people um, referred or writing in to us asking for assistance, and we haven't even really opened our doors yet. Come <laughs> she's a moron, man. She is so stupid, man. Yeah, Flex dumb. cases may take years, and there may be some without a valid legal way to see them through. You have to just see if you can find new evidence. That's sort of the crux of the issue. In Isaiah's case, his attorneys uncovered police reports showing another suspect. He was acquitted in his wife's murder in a retrial. So there will be some difficult choices. Absolutely. There's always a difficult choice. So they found that there was another suspect. Not that the other guy did it. Just that the police did good work and they found that at the time and they found may, maybe it was maybe it was another person. But was he probably, went to trial and got convicted. It was probably some, you know, that, that happened a while back. So DNA 74, was 1974. Yeah. So DNA whole, you know, taking all that shit wasn't as advanced. So what they did was probably run some fucking the, the, the victim's clothing or some shit that she probably had on all day. She probably went to fucking work, hugged other people, all type of shit. They pulled Crickies. something off of that. Yeah. yeah, they pulled some shit off of that, and it was another mm -hmm. person's DNA. And now it's like, oh, it was she had another person's DNA on her shirt, though. You know, <laughs> and that, that's all that's all it takes nowadays. But it's just like I feel like I don't know, bro. It's bullshit. Whatever. And that and yeah. that and that probably that probably was brought up in the trial, but they said, well. That may be the case, but here's the mountain of evidence we have, and and also the motive the motive he must have he might have had to kill her. And so, they don't tell us, they really, don't tell us really anything that shit like that. They won't tell us anything about the evidence they had against him. Oh, um, of course, yeah. Um, salute to um, yes, it will fire. probably destroy. Yes, salute to how fire he says sons act like sons don't profile each other all the time. I've been in many hoods that I didn't belong to and got checked immediately. The only reason I didn't get dealt with is because I was with family or one of the homies who's affiliated. Yeah, sons, yeah, sons don't like strange Negroes, man. That is what these sons do not like. But another <laughs> thing I noticed about dude, the old man, Isaiah, it's like he didn't say anything about his wife. Like he didn't say. I would never kill my wife. I love exactly. her. I'm innocent. Like, why would exactly. that? Like, That's a good point, he, bro. He was just talking back. about himself. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. He, he, if, if your wife got killed, man, then that, that would be a, a, a huge deal. Yeah, if somebody, you got for the murder of somebody you love, man, you know you didn't somebody, do it. Somebody, somebody's free. Thing you say. Somebody's free 
after stabbing my wife 11 fucking times. Yeah. I'm livid. You know what I'm saying? I'm upset. Yeah. And I went on a whole trial and evidence was was presented and witnesses came in and all that. That's traumatic. Like, it's not like they just accused them and then they opened up the jail cell and threw them in. It was like they had to present a case and fucking convict them. Like, that's traumatizing, man. For, for if you didn't do that shit. Salute to Doug Chunks, man. Um, people, dog. It says, is it me or do every one of these stories make it look like the person in question never committed a crime before? It was arrested out of the blue with no contact. Yeah, they don't tell you the person's criminal record. They make it seem like, yeah, they make it seem like these are all first time offenders and shit. Like, come on, man. Um, so, my question. The way that the law is structured, there's just uh, there's. I was gonna say, my question is like, why why are these people doing this? Doing why are they actively lies. getting convicted? The they juice lies. crew. Yeah, I think they. Nah, I ain't letting y'all keep blaming everything on the fucking juice crew. Nah, the gliders, bro. Shit, man. Yeah, she, lies, no, but do they actually think? Do, do they the actually think that he's innocent, soldier, or are they just the trying juice to? Crew funds this stuff. I'm just saying, do they actually think he's innocent, or are they just trying to virtue signal and feel good about themselves somehow that they're getting a killer out? I don't get what the motivation is. She has a histrionic personality disorder. She can't be anything else unless she's getting people off, and she becomes magnificent if she does these sorts of things. A lot of a, a lot of people who do this sort of thing have that problem. It's a psychopathy that it's incurable. Yeah, but but knowing that he actually killed them. And she then she still care. feels good about getting a killer out. She doesn't care. And that's yeah, that's the whole thing. Like those students, the six students, they they are fucked. They can't go into regular fucking law and be like regular, like regular attorneys or prosecutors again because all they trying to do is find a fucking a mistake in a paperwork or some shit like that, and they nitpick every fucking thing. It's just yeah. like so they have no people. conscience. They have yeah, no the conscience dudes, whatsoever the about their victim. Terrible. They're going to be horrible people. No, no, no. They do have a conscience, but it's it. They they do it to think well of themselves. It, it, the mm. that's the currency. Essentially, what you're looking at is an empath who's helping a psychopath, and the psychopath has convinced the empath that what she's doing is valuable. Whereas, and she'll she gets validity out of this. It's a kind of crazy relationship. I, I can't explain it beyond that, but. She's got mm. a personality disorder, definitely. Mm. Okay. Only much that we can do to help. Joseph Allen and Nancy Smith spent years in prison after a 1994 conviction. The pair was accused of sexually abusing preschoolers in Lorain County. Can you imagine no. having that hang over you for 28 years? Nobody knows what that was like. A judge threw out the charges when new evidence surfaced about false allegations. Oh, yeah. While success stories make the headlines, sometimes years are spent helping inmates who were guilty all along. Did you write for? <laughs> yeah, let's get to that. Patience. While success stories make the headlines, sometimes years are spent helping inmates who were guilty all along. Did you write Phyllis Cottle? No, I did not. Samuel Herring <laughs> spent nearly 40 years saying he wasn't yeah. the guy. But new tests found his DNA on Phyllis Cottle's clothing, proving Herring did rape her in 1984. He said, wow. damn. He raped. Damn, y'all got me. <laughs> Look at them eyes, man. Look at them eyes. Yeah. He's still oh, raping. So Santa Claus. That motherfucker, the booty warrior, the booty bad. Yeah, he's a booty warrior now. He's still raping. He didn't stop. Oh, I did not. Samuel Herring spent nearly 40 years saying he wasn't the guy, but new tests found his DNA on Phyllis Cottle's clothing, proving Herring did rape her in 1984. Clearly, Samuel Herring knew he was not innocent. He went to the Innocence Project, convinced them uh, to pursue this, and then came to us. It's ludicrous to think we can know or anybody can know before you do it. That's why you do the testing. Mark Godsey with the Ohio Innocence Project says he gets three to four hundred referrals each year. 
He's been at it for 20 years. I think we've had over like 12,000 people write to us since we started. And we've gone to court in that posture maybe 50 times. And we've won most of them. As a prosecutor, the last thing we want is for somebody innocent to be sitting in prison, especially even worse for many years. It was 46 years for Isaiah. Last March, a judge declared Isaiah wrongfully in prison. Only thing I didn't want to do was die. Without having no justice. Isaiah died one month later. He was <clears throat> 83. But Damn. in his fight for oh, justice, Lord, he boy. had one message for those on the same path toward freedom. Hey, you know, man, fight. That's the only way you're going to win. Just last month, a year after he died, the courts approved a $3 million settlement in Isaiah's wrongful imprisonment case. $3 million is a lot of money. So, where does all that money go? Well, sadly, we're told that he has no surviving siblings, so some of that will go to distant relatives out of state. Taro, why is yeah, that unrelated to him? convictions? In Hell yeah. A number of things. Witnesses who misidentify someone, false confessions, police misconduct, bad science, and defense lawyers who didn't do a good job. Mm. Taro, thank you. Still ahead, a break in the Dwayne Brooks case. I want to hug my mother and hold her pick her up and just hold her in my arms. She wants to cry, she can cry. If I want to cry, I can cry. That's what I want to do first. Damn, let him out. He wants to hug his mom, let him out. It's like something out of a nightmare. I heard a knock at the door, I opened the door, and they arrested me. Charged with murder, taken from his family, from his home for a crime Dwayne Brooks says he had nothing to do with. There was no evidence. They took me to trial for murder. No evidence. Facing the death penalty with no evidence. In Ohio, in America. For 35 years, Dwayne Brooks sat behind bars, insisting he's innocent of the 1987 murder of Clinton Arnold in Cleveland's Luke Easter Park. How could you just put a murder on somebody that didn't do it? How does that happen? Then, a break in Brooks' case. Police reports never turned over to defense attorneys raised questions about his guilt. In April, Cuyahoga County Judge William McGinty ruled what was hidden for decades in those reports cost Brooks a fair trial. The guilty verdict overturned. This is the last of it all, Mom. Now 57 years old, Brooks walked out of jail <laughs> and into the arms of family. What's For that, more a than decades, his mother wondered if the day <laughs> would ever come. Yeah, too, that's his wife. No, no, it's been a long time coming. It's been rough. It's been rough. It's been rough. But uh, thank God we got him. We got him. And he's free at last. He's free. But as the tears flowed, so did another painful reality. The years lost. Time Brooks' daughter, Danae, says she can never get back. She was four years old when her dad was arrested. They didn't give him a chance. Your daddy was fine. To us. They don't know how many father-daughter dances I've been to without him. They don't know in the past year fighting cancer without him. Like, this is unreal. It's overwhelming. And we got a lot of lost time to make up. And for Brooks, how you feel now, brown sign, sugar? someone was finally listening he to what he'd been what? saying for years. And I know some. So how do you feel now, Brown Sugar? You said I was a punk, Brown Sugar. She got cancer. You going to hell? That's cold. I want to hell. Put that. Put that pole. Hey, uh, put, put that, that pole, pole back. Up. What, the, what? Check on the pole. We need a pole, a pole check. I don't even care about that pole no more. Uh oh, it's tightening up, man. It's forty nine to forty, man. You're not going to live through Bald Gate. Actually, um, this actually reminds me. Um, uh, my dad was on the jury for this guy. The trial went like, um. He did it, and the judge said, what's the evidence? They're like, no evidence. And they're like, all right, he's guilty. Mm. Wow. Yeah, yeah but I guy. apologize for calling a uh, cancer girl a punk. I'm sorry. Yeah, man, that was fucked up, man. God damn. Well, I didn't know. We, we, you're never a cancer, say, you're a cancer we, we never We don't say nothing bad about anybody on here, and then you go and do some shit like that. <laughs> yeah, we keep it Christian. <laughs> Yeah. Brown sugar, you're yeah. a you're you're a cancer cyst. You should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah, she cancer phobic. Shut the hell up! Fuck it off again. 
Yeah, man. You'll be back. We know you'll be back. About three minutes, you'll be back. I'm I'm out of here. It's a great show, man, guys. Good night. All right, so who won? Um, AP won forty nine to forty, man. She 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 beat you, man. Oh wow. Salute, man. Peace. Um, ah, yeah. Salute, next show.